my friends are since. Recently a band got in touch with me and asked if I would do them a music video and they were specifically interested in me using some of my weird and wonderful analog video hardware. Now as part of the video they wanted to have text in there at certain points and this meant they had to think about kind of creative ways to display the text because I didn't just want to overlay kind of generic fonts in whatever video processing software I was using. And I remembered that in my big cupboard full of old dusty video equipment that I've collected over the years, I had a few of these different video titlers or video title generators. Now, if you're not familiar with what a video titler does or what it is, essentially, this was a device that was primarily marketed and used in the consumer video market to allow people to overlay text on top of their videos. Usually, this would be used in something like a scenario where somebody was making a home video for their friends who were getting married and they wanted to just up the video production level slightly, maybe by putting a nice title in the start saying, you know, many years of happiness, Agnes and, I don't know, Jimmy or whoever it might be. But that was kind of the idea. Now, the way these things work in practice is that you take your video source, that would usually be a handheld camcorder or some kind of VCR. You then feed in the video into the title generator. This one takes S video and composite. I'm just using composite. You then would overlay your text on top of it and then you spit the video back out the back and then you can record it onto another device like a VCR or whatever and that's your finished edited video. Now there are tons and tons of different varieties of these video titlers and each of them have kind of different effects and uh, features and levels of usability. This one in particular is quite nice because not only does it have a few different options for colours and backgrounds and sizes of text, it also has this kind of full keyboard which actually quite reminds me of the ZX Spectrum. But this might not seem like a big deal but this is really cool because on some of these devices you just have a couple of buttons and you have to manually select every letter for every part of your text which is very, very tedious. So it's really nice to have this keyboard because it makes things way faster. Now this one in particular is called the VTG228 Plus. It's made by a company called Videotech who are an old British company who made a whole bunch of these consumer devices. I do actually have a whole host of other devices from Videotech including some other titlers. However this one I decided to pick up and complete because it has a plastic case and some of their other devices are metal which is quite nice but if you want to circuit bend them that quickly becomes an issue because drilling into the steel or whatever thick metal they used back in those days uh, is, is quite, um, quite the task. So this thing not only is it plastic and much easier to modify it's also got space inside so you can actually fit your modifications which is great. Now in the past I've done videos or at least I've done one video so far on a video enhancer that I've circuit bent and this is my third successful circuit bent video project and there are some similarities when you're bending something like this to when you're bending a video enhancer. However, there are some differences as well. So if you're interested in the process of the video enhancer, then go watch that other video. But I'll give you a kind of quick lowdown of what I did to this, because even though there are quite a lot of circuit bent video titlers out there, you often just see the end result and you don't actually get an explanation of what it's doing or why or how that was achieved. So I'll quickly run you through my methodology for bending this. Much like when I bent the video enhancer, the first thing I did was take off the rear panel and that's to give me access to the PCB. If you really want to do this properly, what you should do is take all of the PCB out, depending on how many you have. You should identify the different chips that are in there, get the model numbers, look up the data sheet, find out what pins do what, and even if you don't know specifically what combinations will give you good effects or anything like that, it does mean that you can safely avoid the power and ground pins. And the reason for this is not only is it safer, but also it means that you can avoid blowing up the chips. Because sometimes you might want to connect up the ground pin on a chip, but really you want to avoid the power pins at all costs because it's very easy to blow the ICs in these if you connect them up the wrong way or to you know the wrong kind of bend point or whatever. Now I said that's 
the smart way to do it or the correct way to do it. However, I am a lazy bastard and so I didn't bother doing that at all. All I did was do a visual inspection of the PCB from the back, identified where there were chips by the two rows and then started connecting different points on the chips together using crocodile clips or alligator clips or whatever you want to call them. And then I saw what kinds of effects I got. I picked ones that I thought were interesting, effects that I liked, and then I would mark those points with paint pens. Once I'd found a variety of different points that I liked and I'd marked them out, I then soldered wires onto them and then I could connect them up to my components. Now another difference, or at least one difference I should say between bending a device like this versus bending a video enhancer is that on a video enhancer usually the effects have gradations and so you want to use a potentiometer or a knob so that you can slowly or smoothly go through those different effects and get you know kind of a range of effects from the single kind of bend combination. However, in this kind of device, what I've discovered is that most of the time you don't really get a gradation. There isn't really a change across a range, at least not when I've tried this device. Uh, that might not be correct. However, I found that you either get a glitchy effect or you don't. It's kind of binary and there's less value in adding a potentiometer. So for this particular bend, I've gone with just push buttons and switches, which means I can momentarily connect two points and glitch things up. Now another difference with this to bending a video enhancer is that with a video enhancer you can kind of go mad because no matter what you do to it, the effect can be completely wild but you never lose your original signal because it's coming from a third party source or like another bit of hardware. Whereas in this thing, you're adding text and then you're trying to glitch up the text. And so if you're not careful and if you bend things too much or choose the wrong bend points, you can scramble the memory of this thing and that means that you lose the text you've put in. And whilst it might be cool to get really scrambly text, you do obviously probably want to retain the text you've typed in so that you can glitch up and then go back to it. You don't just want a mass of jumbled letters all the time. And so you do have to kind of be a wee bit more considerate with your bends and, you know, avoid the ones that will scramble the memory or at least mark them in a certain way. For this one, finding the bend points was fairly straightforward. Um, there were a few that scrambled things completely and I managed to avoid them. However, when it came to drilling the case, what I discovered was that actually there's like a thick kind of plastic sticker on the front of this. And when I tried to drill through it, it all splintered away. And so in my rage, I ended up cutting along the bottom here so that I didn't have to drill in and mess it all up all the time. And it's very untidy because this was just an experimental thing. But if I was going to do this again, I think what I would do would be remove the entire front sticker off of this bit. Because you don't really need it if you're using this as a circuit bent device because the, the keys and things have got labels on them. But I would do that and I would probably spray paint the thing or something. I'm not really sure. Needless to say, my front panel is not very tidy. You can tell this by the arrangement of my buttons and switches. But for these purposes, it doesn't really matter. Now, I'll just explain my signal flow for you so you understand what's going on here first. I've got a wee crappy uh, composite car reversal camera up here and that is going into this. The signal is then being split when it comes out of this device and it is going into my laptop where I'm capturing the output so you can see it a bit more clearly. But it's also going straight into my CRT TV here which you can see on the screen. So that's why there's double images perhaps at the bottom. So I'll just slide up the mixer here and I will turn it on. Now we don't have anything here. The basic kind of layout of it is that you have different pages and you can either step through them using this kind of thing here or you can scroll and it will scroll the text down the screen. Now the way you edit the text is going to create. Here is one I did earlier but I'll erase that for now. You go in and you basically type what you want to type. So I don't know, hello. Now obviously that colour isn't very good, right? So we can change the colour, make it, I know, red, hiya. There's a whole bunch of different options in here. There's different sizes. You can also add in backgrounds. So let's add in a background here and that should give us black background. So there you go. And then you can kind of fill things up and change them and change the width of the text change whether or not there's a shadow. You can inverse everything, 
all that kind of good stuff. I should say actually there are some interesting kind of um, extra characters in here. So let's find one. If you hold down shift, there's kind of like, you know, squares and yeah, whatever. We've even got a movie camera, look at that. Uh, oh, there are music notes as well. Yeah, look at that, that's cool. So now you've created your wonderful title here and you know, adjusted it as you want it to be adjusted. And what do you do now? Well, you can either scroll, you can pick through the pages, but that's the general operation. Anyway, you go through the different effects here. It'll show you the push buttons. So if we go from left to right, this green one on its own doesn't do too much. But the beauty of a device like this is that if you combine different effects, you can get interesting things that you don't from one button or one effect on its own. So for example, this doesn't do too much on its own. If I click this one, this engages the background, which is pretty cool. And then if I press the first button, I start to get this really kind of glitchy, interesting effect. If I press the next one, this engages or it scrambles the characters and you'll notice that it retains the original text in memory. If I combine that with other buttons, you start to get some interesting effects. The next button here scrambles things again, but it also scrambles the colors a bit. And of course, we can start to, you know, combine all of them together in different ways. Now, if I go to this button over here, these ones are a bit more mental in the sense they really start to throw things for a loop. Uh, and if we combine them with the other buttons, things quickly kind of get out of hand. And it's one of my favorite sections of this device. The yellow one is similar, but even more insane. And I, you generate all these crazy patterns, which I love. See? And then this one, is similar to the green one and that on its own it doesn't do very much but as soon as you start look at that i love how that looks and you can get the idea how you can start to combine these things and combine these with other devices now i've got another two buttons up here this one again on its own not very much but start to combine it with the other buttons and you get the same kind of so you get the gist of things here. And I particularly like the push buttons because it means you can play these in time with the music or whatever video you might be doing. I did try and add a Vactral in here which would give me audio reactivity but I couldn't get it to work. And I'm not entirely sure whether there was too much resistance or maybe not enough resistance or whether the effect just didn't work. But I don't know, I'm not an electronics guru. But in future I might try to figure that out. But on their own, these buttons are pretty useful for that kind of rhythmical stuff. Now, of course, we also have switches. So this one on its own doesn't do much, but it starts to give you really interesting different effects. Let's engage some of the other switches. And so as a kind of creative tool, this means you can generate patterns or, you know, just play about with text and everything else. Now this is on its own, right? This is just with a static page. But if I start to scroll through the stuff that's in here, it gets even wilder because then you get the dynamics of movement along with the, um, the effects as well which I really like actually. And if you look down here, I don't know if you really see this, but the lights are going mental on this. So it's clearly sc scrambling something, but not in a way that, you know, makes it crash, which is always good. See, these are the kinds of patterns I love. Look at that. I think that's fantastic. And this is the sort of stuff. I mean, you could use this kind of thing just as textures in the back of videos, or you could really use it as, you know, if you time it carefully, then you can, you know, switch back and forth between your kind of original stuff. So that's that's it, really. This is my Circa Bend video device. I think in future what I would do is I would spend a lot more time mapping out exactly which effects do what because there are some quite clear differences. And I think I would um, convert some of these into push buttons because I think the push buttons are really useful when it comes to this kind of effect. The other thing, of course, you can do with this is run these kinds of devices into another video enhancer unit, which is probably what I'm going to do for the music video. And that way I can get different kinds of effect that are then glitched up as well. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. If I do have any more of these, I'll do another video on them at the time to show you what I've done at that point. 
and at some point if I can get my hands on more of them and I can get my panel looking nice and all that then I might eventually have some that I can sell on but for now they're just for my own kind of um, creative endeavours. Hopefully that was interesting, that is an explanation of what a circuit bent video titler does and also how it might be useful, my process for kind of circuit bending this kind of thing and if you've got questions about this or maybe you're interested in circuit bending your own video device please feel free to ask and I will redirect you to someone who knows far more than I do. For now, goodbye.